So if you think the player pool in general is not going to four bet often enough, then you should be three betting a lot. Really, the only thing they can do to ruin an aggressive three bet strategy is to four bet a lot. So if they don't do that, then three bet as much as you want. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, here with the video for PokerNews.com. If you want a great source for poker news, make sure you check them out. Follow them on Twitter at PokerNews, check them out at PokerNews.com. They have all sorts of information to keep you in the loop about what is taking place in the poker world. Here we have a hand from the World Series of Poker main event that I played. We're facing a raise from the low jack seat, playing very deep stacked. And with Ace Jack offsuit, we really only have two options. We can either call or three bet. And the main determining factor in what I'm gonna do in this spot is I wanna ask how often am I going to get four bet by the low jack? If I think I'm gonna get four bet very infrequently, I'm definitely gonna three bet because being able to get the pot heads up in position with what's probably the best hand is going to be a huge success. But you really, really, really don't want to three bet a loose aggressive player and then have them four bet you and force you to fold or call and be in a really rough spot. So as you expect your opponent to be almost maniacal or when you expect your opponent to have a tight range to begin with to the point that they will just have many more better hands than this ace jack, um, in those scenarios where we expect to face aggression, we should be more inclined to call. But Against most people, I'm just going to three bet the big offsuit hands. You're going to find that ace jack offsuit and king jack offsuit and ace 10 offsuit and queen jack offsuit, like if you are going to play these hands, very often you do want to play them aggressively. I've also found that in general, a lot of players who are not accustomed to playing in you know, loose, aggressive games where they are going to face three bets, a lot of those players just fold a little bit too often and don't four bet nearly often enough. So if you think the player pool in general is not going to four bet often enough, then you should be three betting a lot. Really, the only thing they can do to ruin an aggressive three bet strategy is to four bet a lot. So if they don't do that, then three bet as much as you want. <laughs> the opponent does call. Flop comes jack nine three and they check. So my default play in this scenario is definitely to bet. We have the best hand the vast majority of the time. Um, the only time I would ever check here is if I can just like look and tell the opponent's looking to check raise me because I think they have a really good hand. The thing is though, like even if they have a really good hand, what's a really good hand look like on jack nine three? It's gonna be exactly nines and threes, which is kind of hard to have. So this is a spot where I definitely think we should bet the majority of the time. However, I do check this time and I don't particularly love the check because when I do check, I let my opponent draw to various overcards for free, right? Like if your opponent does have, let's just say even king 10, right? If they have king 10, I let them draw to the queen or the king, whereas they would have called a bet or perhaps would have raised. Maybe this goes back to that thought process before though. If I think I'm going to get raised, I don't really want to get raised. You're gonna find that most hands, like top pair or worse, when they do bet and get raised, they're usually pretty unhappy and you'd rather not be in that scenario. So if there's some way I could just like look and tell this player was gonna raise me, then sure, feel free to check behind. But for the most part, we have the best hand by a mile and we want to value that, especially on this board that should connect okay with the opponent's range. Check, check though, turns a queen. And now take a second and think about this spot. What should we do when the opponent checks the turn? Take a second, really think about it, pause the video, and in the comment section, type what you would do in this spot. Would we check, bet, I don't know, 2,000, bet 4,000, or blast it for 6,000? What do you prefer? All right, you're back. Okay, click like, click subscribe. <laughs> I would appreciate it. All right. In this scenario, I think we have a pretty easy check. Our hand just got downgraded substantially from a premium made hand on the flop to now a pretty obviously marginal made hand. I think a lot of players in the low jack seat will check some of their queens on the turn because given I, I let it go check check on the flop, I probably have a lot of ace high, king high, etc., And a lot of those are gonna have a queen with it or something like that. So I think this is a spot where I think the low jack could be still checking with some better hands. 
if I get the vibe or if I had the vibe and I still have it that I thought the opponent liked their hand, then I'd be even more inclined to check. So this is a situation where I think we have a pretty easy check now. And you may say, but aren't we worried about getting outdrawn? And like, not really. I mean, what, what are the bad rivers? I mean, a king is bad and a 10 is bad. That's it. I guess a nine's not great. Eight's not great. It's not a ton of cards, though, if you think about it. So if there really aren't a ton of bad cards that can come, and even on those, I can probably still just call a bet because we have a reasonable bluff catcher. I think we have a pretty reasonable spot to let it go check, check. A lot of people look at this and say, yeah, but there are some bad cards, therefore we should bet. But that's not necessarily true because... Uh, what's going to happen is if we bet and get raised, it's awful. If we bet and get called, we could be beat very easily. There are some worse hands that could call, like 10-9. Uh, but even then, those may decide to raise and put me in a bad spot. If I do bet this turn, by the way, and get raised, I need to fold, and I don't really want to fold this hand. So you're going to find that these types of hands that are good, but certainly not the nuts, very, very much prefer to just let it go check, check. Rivers and Ace, the opponent, checks. So now I have two pair. At this point, I have the best hand basically every time. If I do bet the river and get raised, I think I can still just conceivably call at that point. I mean, yes, every once in a while I'm going to be shown straights or sets that just gave me every opportunity to bluff, but now I'm pretty happy with this hand. So if I do make a normal bet, like let's say 3,000, and the opponent does raise, I think we have to pay it off. But in this hand, I actually get a little bit out of line and go 7,200. Why in the world would I do that? Well, I, I, I know the few times where I really get exploitative with this. And one of the big re, big times I do that, or the, one of the main times I do this is when I can either look and tell the opponent likes their hand or when I've been battling with the opponent a decent amount. If I think the opponent is going to look at this big bet and just assume I must be trying to make them fold out their obvious jack or queen, if the opponent thinks that, then I love betting big because the loose and aggressive battling opponents are just not going to fold. I also like betting big when a card that should be good for my range comes and my opponent, again, thinks I'm going to be battling. And obviously the ace, in theory, should be pretty good for my range. So if it's good for my range, but I probably don't have ace, queen, or ace, jack because I would have bet those on the flop of the turn, then all I'm representing is ace, king. And if all I'm representing is ace, king, some people are going to find hero calls. I do not like big over bets and against players who are a little bit tight, a little bit passive. Players who are going to make big folds, those are not the times you want to over bet. So I think in general, you just want to make a standard-ish bet of something like 3,500 or 4,000 on the river. But against some particular opponents, I definitely could see going for a bigger bet being better. And that's what I do this time, and we get paid. I have no clue what the opponent had. I'm just going to pretend like they decided to make a superhero call with the 10-9 uh, offsuit. But seriously, they probably just had an ace. And that's the other nice thing about this, is that if you think about what people are going to check the flop and check the turn with from the opponent's point of view, a lot of that will just end up being ace high. And if our opponent does have ace high, and they rivered an ace and they decided to check it, they're not really planning on folding it to a bet, right? So against those hands, those hands will also call a decent amount. So it's tough to know if I left a lot of money on the table here. I mean, for all I know, the opponent could have just had like ace nine or ace three, and they would have paid a flop bet and maybe even a turn bet. But... I think once I do let it go check, check, I have to check behind the turn queen. And once we get the ace on the river, obviously we have to go for value. Do not be a chicken. Don't just check it back the river. Every once in a while, I'll see some players who are really passive just check behind on the river thinking, oh, well, I, let, let me just, I'm just happy to win the pot. A lot of people just think, I'm happy to win it. But we don't want to be happy to win the minimum. We want to go for the maximum and get full value. And... I'm not sure if we necessarily got full value this time, but we certainly want a pretty nice pot. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click like, click subscribe below. Good luck in your games. Have a fantastic week, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, preflop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free membership to PokerCoaching.com right now at PokerCoaching.com free. I'll talk to you next time.